Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I just got back from a camping trip with my boy and while I was there I was confronted with a situation which made me realize that we are headed for a real problem this winter and it's not the one that most people are talking about. The problem most people are talking about is the shortage of heating fuel that's coming uh, this winter and that's something that's worthy of uh, discussion uh, but that is not the end of the problem. In fact that is just the beginning of the problem because people's reaction to that problem is going to cause another problem which I think is going to be a real monster for a lot of people and that's what I want to talk about in this video because this is a problem I'm not hearing anybody discussing. So while I was camping I was at a campground that my boy and I go to every year. It's just a family campground. We have kind of a tradition of going there. Uh, we've been going there since he was like four years old and I chose it because it was the kind of place you can just drive right up to the campsite and we have kind of a sentimental attachment. Uh, to this uh, experience that we do every year together. But there are some real downsides to it. It's a family campground. Uh, there are a lot of families. There are a lot of bros that go there. There are a lot of people, in fact, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the people that go there don't know how to burn a clean fire. And c burning fire, uh, burning firewood, is the kind of go-to solution that a lot of uh, countries are talking about to this coming fuel shortage uh, for heating people's homes in the winter. A lot of uh, uh, different countries are saying, you know, people should be chopping firewood, people should be securing firewood so they can heat their homes. Firewood's a great way to heat your homes. Uh, I do it here every year. We grab wood from the forest behind me, uh, chop it, stack it, dry it, and I bring it in and we have a really nice Vermont castings wood stove. It burns things really cleanly and efficiently. Uh, not only does it heat the house, but we can cook over it, I can make tea over it, I can boil soup over it. I can do all the, uh, the heating functions for the house using Using that firewood. I think firewood's a great way to go. Uh, there are some downsides to firewood though. Uh, one of them is that if you don't burn it cleanly, it puts off a lot of pollution. And I was getting hit with a lot of that while we were camping. Uh, there were families all around us and people just don't know how to burn firewood. Uh, there was a, plenty of uh, clean dry firewood provided by the campground uh, and even having nice dry firewood People just don't know how to burn it very cleanly and after just 48 hours there I could feel in the back of my throat like a red rawness. Uh, my lungs even right now feel like they got like a ceiling, like a 90% capacity. I try to take a, a full deep breath and I feel like they just don't really, like I don't get a full breath. Uh, and, and I know from experience it, I'm going to feel like this for about a week but now that I'm back home in the real clean air of my home in the quiet and peace that I have here uh, you know where we live all the time I know that I'm going to heal up but if there are a lot of people that are planning on burning firewood for the coming heating crisis those people most likely are going to be burning it in a really dirty way and that's if we're lucky and it's all firewood <laughs> and it's not going to be all firewood because Firewood uh, costs money and there's another resource that is oftentimes free and that's called trash and garbage like plastic bags and whatever else will burn. People are going to throw that into the fire. So if you're living in an area where people are kind of close together and this is an area that people are going to have issues getting access to heating fuel and people are going to be uh, you know, burning firewood and trash and whatever else. It's going to be like what I was experiencing camping, except you're not just going to be there for two or three or four days and getting the results of that. You're going to be in that for two, three, four months over the winter while people are just using this firewood or uh, you know trash or whatever they're burning to keep themselves from freezing to death. Uh, what is that going to do to the air around you? Well, it's going to be awful. Uh, at the campground where I was at, like I mentioned, just after a couple of days, I was feeling, uh, you know, real rawness in my throat. Uh, whenever I go camping, uh, I burn wood in a clean way. Uh, here at my home, I have a nice Vermont casting stove, which burns it very cleanly. When I go camping, I have a portable, uh, it's, I think it's made by EnviroFit. It's a portable stove. I'm going to put a link down in the description below if you want to get one for yourself. They're really wonderful for a couple of reasons. One is they burn very cleanly, so you're not putting off a bunch of smoke. You're being very courteous to your own lungs. You're being courteous to the people around you, even if they're not being courteous to you at all. Uh, and in addition to that, you are able to get a lot of heat out of a very small amount of fuel. I can just take some pine cones and some little twigs and some wood chips and it can be kind of damp too and because it's a very small combustion chamber you can get all the heat extracted out of that right up into your uh, cooking pot or whatever you're trying to heat up and uh, it 
it, uh, you get a lot more bang for your buck when you use one of these things. But uh, the benefit to everyone around me was that I wasn't creating a bunch of uh, cooking smoke while I was cooking. You can't anticipate the people are going to do that around you. Like I said, 99.9% .9 of all the people in this campground, uh, you know, I, I assume some of these people have been camping before, ain't nobody know how to burn wood cleanly. So you need to have a plan. And that's what this video is about. You need to have a plan for what is going to happen after people start having trouble getting uh, heating fuel for their homes. The plan on the table is they're gonna burn wood. We talked about it in this video, they're probably also gonna be burning garbage. That is gonna be up in the air. And if you don't live in a place like I do, where people are really spread out, you are gonna be marinating, your lungs are gonna be marinating, your children's lungs are gonna be marinating in that toxic, smoky, burned garbage soup. So what do you do about that? Well, my solution for that is my solution for practically everything. And I know a lot of people that watch this channel aren't a big fan of my solution. My solution was to move out to the country and it solved so many problems. It solved so many crime problems, air pollution problems, water uh, access problems. I, I, I'm not gonna go on and on. It solves a ton of problems. It also creates a few hassles. I gotta drive like a half an hour to get to the grocery store. I know some people love to be able to just go five minutes to the grocery store or, or bike there or walk there or whatever. Yeah, there's some downsides to moving out in the country, but there's a lot of really great upsides. And one of them is that the problem I'm talking about in this video, I'm not gonna have to deal with. This video isn't for me, this video is for you. And if you're someone that is living this situation, you need to come up with a solution. I'm gonna offer a couple of them. One I mentioned is you can move out to the country, but it might be a little late for that. What are some things that you can do in your home? Well, one thing you could do is buy a, a crap ton of N95 masks. And you could have N95 masks, which you'll have to replace frequently if the air quality really is, uh, you know, as bad as it looks like it might be. Uh, you can just have N95 masks for your whole family and you can wear them 24 seven, seven days a week, you know, 30 days out of the month uh, through the entire heating season. That sounds absolutely insane to me, but so too is the problem. You know, the idea of living in a toxic soup of of smoke and sludge and garbage burn particles and everything. So it's a crazy situation and maybe it's gonna end up having a crazy solution. Maybe there's a less crazy solution. One other solution that I would like better would be to get a number of air filters, air filter units. And this is why we are talking about this on a prepping channel. Come this winter, when people start pumping this stuff out of their house and towns start getting covered in smoke, don't you think there's gonna be a run on air filters? Here's some air filters in the links below. You can click to, on, on some of those. These are some of the ones that I use. You don't have to click, you know, don't, you don't have to buy that specific model, whatever. Whatever model you get, make sure you have a uh, an air filter that you know that you can get replacements for and buy a bunch of replacements now. If you have some air filters that you could have uh, hooked up around your house, these air filtration boxes, and you could just have them running all the time and you could constantly be cleaning out the air that's coming into your house. Your house needs a constant supply of I'm gonna call it fresh air, although I'm not sure that the word is gonna necessarily apply, but you're gonna need more oxygen coming into your uh, air. It's gonna be dirty air, but it's gonna, you need more oxygenated air coming into your house constantly. That's gonna be bring the pollution in with it. And if you can be filtering it through some kind of a, a HEPA filter, that is gonna be a pretty good solution. There's a huge downside to that though, and that is if the power goes out, you can't run those things. So maybe you wanna have some N95s on hand as well. Um, and it's not unlikely that power go, might go out uh, to your area. One, in the wintertime, power oftentimes go out, goes out because you've got winter storms. But on top of that, we're talking about a fuel uh, sh shortage, a heating fuel shortage. Well, that could also lead to other types of fuel shortages as people are grabbing other fuel shortages, uh, other fuel sources. And uh, there could very easily be, you know, electrical uh power uh, shortages and there could be blackouts and you might not have access to electricity for your home and that would mean you couldn't run these air filters and people would be you know running their their wood stoves and they're polluting the air but you don't have the ability to uh, to clean it out while I'm on this topic it just popped up in, in my mind right now I wasn't planning on mentioning this in this video uh, but an, another uh, technology that a lot of people use are pellet stoves this is uh, something that uses waste wood it compacts it into these little pellets that look like uh, I used to have guinea pigs when I was little like, little, like guinea pig or gerbil food pellets uh, and uh, you, you buy bags of these they go into like a hopper in this this pellet stove and uh, that that's a, a popular way for a lot of people to heat their homes I hate that idea because th those things need electricity to work so <laughs> It's just, it's insane to me. People buy these things so that they can heat their ho their house if the power ever goes out. And they know damn well that the, that the 
uh, the pellet stove needs electricity to run. So if the power goes out, they can't run their pellet stove. So if you are planning on, uh, you know, coming up with some solution to heat your home when, uh, you know, you don't have access to other, uh, you know, power means, make sure you don't buy a, a pellet stove that needs electricity to run because it's not going to do you any good. So anyway, uh, whatever you're using to clean the air or, uh, you know, avoid the air pollution, make sure that you are thinking about something that is going to, you know, function even if the, the power, grid go, power grid goes down because the power grid may well go down. So think about it because, uh, you know, the whole idea of prepping is to, uh, you know, prepare for things ahead of time because we all know it's so much easier to plan and arrange for things ahead of time instead of doing it at the 11th hour when everybody else is doing it and there's shortages on this uh, and shortages on that. Um, because you know, when the air starts really getting bad, uh, you know, coming this winter, everybody else at the last minute is going to be thinking, heck, I need an air filter because the air in my house is awful. And wouldn't it be nice to have gotten it months ago, right now, today, because you watch my video. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. Links down below to a couple of things, but whatever, even if you don't order it online or whatever, start making some kind of a plan right now because you're going to be kicking yourself later if you didn't come up with any kind of a plan. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.